Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thursday. It's going down on Thursday. My mic is too hot, but okay. Feel it moving. What the fuck are you talking about on Thursday? Feel it, baby. Starting to lose the song because we don't know what the beat's about. Matter of fact, this wasn't the one I picked out. But that's okay because we adapt on a Thursday. You're gay and that's okay. Because we're all a little gay at the end. End of the day, 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 day. Ooh, ah, ah. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> listen. One day, cancel culture is gonna come for me. Giggity. And you know what I'm gonna do? Hey, check out all my intros. I support the gays in every way every tuesday every thursday by the way have you ever eaten hay by a bay just may it's gonna be stop stop hacky corny stupid and you guys deserve better welcome to thursday this is your first day here hey welcome all right welcome we get, I was about to say weird on a Thursday. Y'all miss getting weird? How's the schedule working out for you? I love the feedback that I'm getting. If, if you like Wednesdays or Thursdays, let me know, okay? Because the gay meter went up. I feel like we hit Tuesday and Thursday, and all we're doing is supporting the gays. But hey, they deserve it by the bay. Anyway, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Uh, interesting shit. I just saw an article. Paul Rudd. This was actually the beat I wanted to intro with. I don't know how we know we got we got mixed up, but Paul Rudd has stepped up. He's the sexiest man alive according to People magazine, but I am leaning. I don't see a thing. He looks like a stay-at-home father who likes to clean. I admit he is proportionally okay, but at the end of the day, it's just okay. I don't really see it, but believe it. He's handsome on the inside, and he's okay on the outside. But you're ridiculous to say that's the sexiest man alive today when Chris Helmsworth just walks the planet, damn it. I just can't stand it. The lies, the politics, can it? Just be honest for a moment, don't it? Get you so upset, we're gonna blow it. The government, overthrow it. What? Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. January 6th cannot happen again. Until it can happen again. Paul Rudd being the sexiest man alive. Now we're just giving these things away. And listen, I need you to know I have a man crush on him. I think he's great. Love his movies. I, I think Ant-Man, phenomenal. Uh, this is the end. I think he was in that one. No. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it over a hundred times. I love you, man. Great Paul Rudd movie. You're like, Evan, you psychopath. Why did you watch it over a hundred times? There was a time when I lived in Puerto Rico with no internet. I had one miniature computer. It was called like the HP 101. It literally looks like one of those little car seven inch screen DVD players from back in the day. Real tiny little feller, all right? That's all I had and I had one movie on it. This was before Netflix. This was before, or this was before Netflix had the Netflix service, okay? Hashtag, ya boy is old. And I remember that was the only movie I had. I had no internet. I couldn't look at shit. 
but I would just watch I Love You Man at night to fall asleep because your boy has demons, all right? But in reality, I just have issues falling asleep without watching something. I need to get better at it. But if I literally try, and I think what I got to do is just reset my body. We're talking a lifetime of doing this. So it would probably be a long reset, but it probably be healthy at the end of the day of just not falling asleep watching something. But when I lived in Puerto Rico, that's what I would do. I would put on a movie and I would just drift away, you know. Um, and I watched I Love You Man so many times. Ridiculous. And Paul Rudd, phenomenal actor. I think he's hilarious in what all he does. I think he's a great guy. He seems good on the surface, you know. If there was someone I would probably want to hang out with that was in Hollywood, it might be Paul Rudd. But now, does that mean I would support him becoming sexiest man alive? fuck out of here okay they're throwing a they're throwing a bone to the stay-at-home fathers with this one uh paul rudd, rudd just looks safe at the end of the day i think that's you know i don't know what we're doing and you know what's weird we give and obviously you're just like okay it kind of doesn't mean sexiest man alive because we can't keep just fucking giving it to chris helmsworth okay we just can't keep giving it to george clooney all right we can't keep giving it to to Brad Pitt. We have to start putting people in there. You know who should never win it? Mario Lopez. That man should win uh, Sexiest women, Woman Alive. Okay? Mario Lopez is the prettiest goddamn man I ever done seen in my life. Not only that, his skin is impeccable. You know? he. When you see Mario Lopez on TV, you just go, I should get some moisturizer. You know? Pharrell as well. Great skin. You look at them and you're like, these men have never rode on a horse. That's the vibe I get. I'm like, you don't, you, I don't even know if Mario Lopez knows what a hammer is. Okay. Cause you don't get that kind of complexion with your hands ever touching, uh, tools, any kind of heavy machinery. All right. That man has never thrown a bag of cement on his shoulder and it shows. Okay. Same thing with Pharrell, but Pharrell doesn't have to. He's over here, cause I'm happy, got my hands. Fucking uh, clips, just boom, 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 grinding. Boom, 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 boom. Little skater boy B. Bars, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but Mario Lopez, I wonder if Mario Lopez at night, if he has a waterbed, but the waterbed is just chamomile lotion. You know, I bet he has servants that just spritz him with coconut oil uh, every 30 minutes the entire night and just kind of squeeze cucumber on his eyeballs while he's sleeping. Because the man, it, it doesn't move. And I'm sure there's a, a very simple answer to this. Probably has a little bit of something, a little bit of something going on. Okay. Isn't it weird? It, it's all so weird. But let's not lose this Paul Rudd thing. Get, get me off of fucking Mario Lopez. The fuck? Um, you know, but Saved by the Bell, that was my shit. Um, love me some Saved by the Bell. When I actually got basic television in Puerto Rico, uh, there was this channel that at night, there was a lot of Spanish channels and I would fall asleep to them trying to learn Spanish and I'd be watching TV, but there was one channel, I don't even know what it fucking was, but it would play Saved by the Bell on repeat once you hit a certain time. It was just all night long, got Saved by the Bell and I caught up. It's all right, because it's saved by the bell. Yeah. Um, that's how you know Mario Lopez has done something. Because he looks the same as high school. I need to know his diet, diet, his workout routine. Here's the other secret about Mario Lopez. The man can fucking box. The man knows so much about boxing. Uh, he wrestled. He can fight. The man is probably one of the most real men in Hollywood. As weird as that sound, I think he just has great skincare routine. Anyway, we're getting off him. Back to Paul Rudd. My issue with this sexiest man alive shit, it's, it's horse shit. It's all, you know, they pick and choose. I'm, I'm glad for Paul Rudd to get the fucking, the rub. But here's the thing. Google the cover of People Magazine, Paul Rudd, sexiest man alive. Okay. The man is trying to fuck me. You know what men should never do? <clears throat> lay back and rest their head 
on a pillow and look at you like this. The last thing a man should ever try to do is go, hey, I'm being fucking sexy. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's odd. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay. If I saw this people magazine in a uh, CVS and I was walking by, I would probably call Paul Rudd out for hat for hashtag me tooing me with the way that he's looking into the camera, looking into it, taking my soul, trying to make my willy tingle. Okay. It's not okay. Paul Rudd. All right. You got no business doing that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would love to see the behind the scenes of this. I'm sure it's out there, but what are we doing? What are we doing? Sexiest man alive. There, there is no sexiest man alive, you know, because uh, that one guy is still around. What is his name? What is the guy? I can't fucking think of his name. I'm going to ruin this right now. This is how we do it. Idris Elba. There can't be another sexiest man alive until Idris Elba passes on. That man's accent, come on. You just give it to Idris Elba. We don't. We just need him every once a year, we post a picture of him on a magazine. Everybody knows what it is. But moving on, let's see what we got. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to 7 Minutes in Heaven. Well, we're going to get into some weird shit with Vin Diesel and The Rock. Why? Why is Vin Diesel still a thing? since 2003 actually before that i remember watching fast and furious one when i was underage i wasn't even in high school vin diesel put this post and here is the epitome of passive aggression it's a weird flex and it shows that vin diesel is not okay he's not good to work with you heard about this. If you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, no pun intended, I'll fill you in on this drama between Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Vin Diesel. Now, they filmed, uh, I forgot what fast movie it was, but The Rock is the biggest star in that franchise, and he kind of you know, eclipsed it and has gone on to huge things. It feels like Vin Diesel, the Fast and Furious uh, franchise, is his baby. It's you know, what he's been doing all the time. Uh, I feel like Vin Diesel just plays with fucking toy cars all day, every day, and just creates ideas for the Fast and Furious. He's just like, what if, what if, you know, we just decide to say we're getting Fast and Furious out of this world, you know? And he's like, I want a fucking spaceship, you know? And he has that fucking family is forever, but aliens are for infinity, you know? That's fucking Vin Diesel. But apparently when Vin Diesel and The Rock worked together, there was drama. Couple alphas. Okay, couple alphas. And uh, they just, they couldn't be in the same room. They couldn't work together. They shot scenes differently. Look at me. Fucking Betty Jerry Gossip over here. You know? Betty Jerry Gossip. That's the best way to say that. Fucking Gary Gossip. You could have went for that, Evan. Stupid. I feel like a goddamn tabloid, but terrible time working together. They had all this drama. And then very recently, Vin Diesel posts this. He goes, a picture of them together. And he goes, here's when you know it's a red flag. This pissed me off if I was the, for they pissed me off for the rock. It starts off, my little brother, Dwayne, dot, dot, dot. Hey, Vin, in no way, shape or form. Would anybody suspect that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is your little brother in any sense of that term? Because I get it. I get it. I, I, I understand what you're saying here. I understand what you're trying to establish. But I'm pretty sure The Rock's a bigger star than you are. I don't think you gave him a star. I don't think he asked you for advice. It doesn't really feel like that. It kind of seems like it might be a little delusional. It might be clashing egos on set, and you just think that this is your world. We're going back to it. 
My little brother Dwayne, the time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes. But the time has come. Legacy awaits. I told you years ago that I was going to fulfill my promise to Pablo. That's Paul Walker. R.I.P. I cried in the theater when they did that tribute. Anyway, <clears throat> lights came on real fast. Okay. They ended that tribute and they should have gave people some time to readjust because I went, oh shit. <laughs> oh, it's that fucking song. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Not a dry eye in the house. And when I say not a dry eye in the house, it might have just been me. All right? Music just hits different when you got Paul Walker on the screen. It was too fresh. I swore that we would reach and manifest the best. All right, well, I don't like that you're using the word manifest. Never ends well. Listen, conversations don't go well when you start hearing the word manifest. Unless you're talking about an alien invasion, don't use the word manifest around me. All right, friend? And manifest the best fast and best fast in the finale that is 10. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise chai's idol. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs can't be played by no other. I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. All right, Vin. All righty, Vin. You ain't Darth Vader, okay? You ain't the Grand Emperor Palpatine over here. You must rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. Did you just finish watching The Mandalorian? Who do you think you are talking like that? to anyone you think the rock his destiny is to play fast and furious no this sounds like a toxic relationship you must show up i just feel like there's a better way to talk to someone especially when you guys have beef don't go my little brother don't try to big brother him you know it's just not gonna work out nice uh, it would be interesting to see. I still haven't seen Fast 9. I still have to. I heard it's a lot of fun, actually. I heard it's not a bad movie. Um, and full disclosure, I've seen every single Fast and Furious movie multiple times. While I rip on Vin Diesel, I appreciate the universe that he has created. There's nothing that makes my willy tingle more than an Easter egg and movies meeting up. A good crossover makes my willy tingle twice. Bum, bum, double time. That's why in the Marvel movies, you remember those early ones? You watch, uh, what was it, Captain America? And then you see like Stark Enterprise and you're like, oh God, that's Tony Stark. You know, you just see things mentioned when they mention vibranium. You're like, oh, that's Black Panther. R.I.P. R.I.P. You know, that was sad. That one was sad. Very sad, very sad. Um, but this is just interesting. Looks like Johnson pushed back in his recent cover story with Vanity Fair, said he and Diesel were phil philosophically two different people who approached the business of movie making in two different, very different ways. He would not, he told that he would not be returning for any more Fast and Furious movies. It looks like Diesel is ready to let bygones be bygones in order to fulfill his promise to late Paul Walker. You know what else? That's also the other thing. Don't use guilt of Paul Walker. When anything is is shame or guilt, it's just it's a weird move. Like, hey, don't do it for me. Do it for Paul Walker. Kind of sounds like we're doing it here for you, Vince. You know, for your fucking manifestation. I'm sorry, Paul Rudd being the sexiest man alive just really got me going. But good for him. Good for him. Um... Paul Rudd fucking smizing in the pictures. I would love to see. I'd be fly on the wall and be like, all right. So how do I do this? All right, I'm going to smize. All right, I want to look. Relax it. Mm -hmm. Look at it like you just ate a fucking piece of cheesecake. Mm, I'm just hanging out on the couch here. Mm. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Just gets me going. Gets the people moving. Oh, yeah, I want to touch on this because I had people reach out about when I was mentioning Astro World before. 
uh, listen, I can say things without having all the information <clears throat> and just being like, how could an artist be held uh, responsible for a situation? Because if you didn't listen to the last episode, I talked about Astro World, and I was saying it was ridiculous uh, that how could an artist be held liable for a situation like this? And I stand corrected after researching it more, having people say things and learning about it. It's pretty crazy what actually happened. I went down the rabbit hole of actually looking at a bunch of the videos. <sighs> Should he be held liable? Man, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. And that's why I think this is going to go to court uh, and it's going to play out. <clears throat> but if you deep dive into this Travis Scott uh, concert history, you start seeing how uh, how there is parts of this where he might actually be liable. He has in the past and present uh, promoted people jumping over the fence, knocking down barriers to get in. The event was actually oversold. So then there wasn't enough people to be in there. Now, is the artist held liable for that or the venue? We don't know. But I think if you're telling people to jump over finish f fences to get in, break down barriers, rush the stage, and then you have people, because of the lack of space, dying. You could possibly be held liable. Now, I don't think with situations when you start using things like inciting violence, unless, like, you got to be careful when you start using those terms, like what we deem as inciting violence. I don't, I don't, I didn't see anything of him being like, yeah, fucking smash people, stomp on them, yeah. I only see him saying, jump over the barriers, break them down, rush this. Like he wants to, he promotes this kind of, forgive me for using this, this term, culture, okay? He promotes this culture. And I say that, forgive me for using it, because I feel like so many liberal people have used it. It just, it, it's like toxic masculinity culture. I hear that so fucking much. But it, it promotes this like culture of like, yeah, we're a bunch of hooligans. We rush the stage. We trample. We break down barriers because we're Travis Scott fans. I have never really actually listened to Travis Scott music. Uh, I don't really know anything about him. I think he's dating one of the Jenners or the one of the Kylies or whatever it is. Um, but it does get interesting when you start looking at, oh, they were oversold. Oh, they he told them to break shit down. And you see some of these clips. They're devastating, man. There was one I saw where this girl is up where a cameraman is and she's like, there is a person dead. Stop the concert. And like waving and the cameraman is telling her to get down and just trying to film the concert. And I'm just like, holy fuck. Like, what do you do in that situation? I feel like me instantly, and this is probably from background and nursing and beach lifeguarding and pool lifeguarding, I would probably react and be like, fuck this camera. I'm going to get fired. Whatever. Someone just said someone is dead down here. I'm going to at least acknowledge this. You know, I'm going to at least act upon it. But the guy went back to recording and you saw so much of the dude, these people using the expression can't like, like a pack, like packed in like a can of sardines doesn't even do it justice. It was more like packed in a can of tuna. That's how insane it was. And I mean, like, you know, tuna's just all smushed in there and everything. You can't even separate. It was insanity. Uh, and it's just a bummer, man. And there was there were still those rumors, and it was confirmed with a security guard that he got pricked in the neck, uh, and he passed out, and he had to be resuscitated. Um, it's just a, it's a crazy situation, you know? It's a crazy situation. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end on that happy note. Um, I just want you guys to know, thank you for people who have been reaching out. Uh, I'm glad people are enjoying the podcast. Listen, I check my DMs. And not know, if you send a weird DM, I don't check it. But the people who reach out about the podcast, they're enjoying it. They have uh, ideas, things for it. I'm always open to it, baby. I do this for me. I do it for you. All right? So I'm trying to give you all whatever I can. So if you ever have ideas, things you want, let a brother know. That's no effects, baby. All right. That is no effects.
Yeah. And I just hope that. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, no. This is what fucking Paul Rudd was listening to while he was posing for pictures. Yeah. I'm Ant-Man. But I'm trying to fuck your aunt, man. Yeah. Trying to have her catch that stinger. Give her that microscopic swinger. We fucked those words up. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Show a friend. Like it on YouTube. Subscribe. Get more clips and everything on YouTube. So check it out. If you only listen to the podcast, go subscribe. Hook a brother up. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on Tuesday. Remember, no matter what, I still love you.